Welcome to worship, everybody. It is November 29th, uh, Sunday, and we are live streaming from Peace Lutheran Church. Happy New Year! Did you know it is the new year? It's the new year in the church. It's the beginning of the season of Advent, which is the first season of this new church year. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping for the coming of God. It's a time of preparation for the celebration of Jesus' birth, God coming into the world as one of us, uh, as a human being. And we do this time uh, well as we prepare, we try to get in touch with uh, what it is to wait and to hope. Can you, can you relate to waiting and hoping these days? Okay, God meets us on this journey. Uh, we're walking through the Old Testament, and today's we have the story of Daniel from the Bible. May God bless us as we walk into the future, and we trust that God walks with us, even in these anxious and challenging times. As we begin worship today, we acknowledge that these are the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish nation. We lift up the vision that God has given us at Peace Lutheran Church to be a diverse community of faith, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, right here in the hilltop of Tacoma, a community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. We are living into this vision. And a few announcements, a word about the life and the ministry of the church. Uh, as always, since we don't have a chance to physically share our offerings together, I want to just say thank you to you for the many ways that you are sharing your time and your talent and your treasure to serve God uh, in our world, in our community, through the church today. Special thank you to those who are financially supporting the ministry of the church. If you're looking for ways to do that, you could send something to the church, op donation to the church office uh, in the mail. You could click on the giving link on the church website. You could also set up electronic giving through Demish in the church office. Our Sunday morning schedule is this, 9.30 to 10.30. We have faith opportunities for everyone uh, if you're fifth grade on up. Uh, this is through Zoom, fifth and sixth grade class, seventh and eighth grade class, and then an adult class. Oh, I forgot to say we don't have a high school offering on Sundays. Um, the children have a godly play video that is posted every Sunday, a children's Bible story. And for middle and high school students, a Wednesday 5 to 6 p.m. Change Makers group is a wonderful chance for our youth to come together and to be about service and doing, uh, making, doing change work, work, the work of change, uh, making a difference in the community together. On Thursdays from noon to one, Pastor Jay and I lead a community Bible study. If you'd like to be part of any of the Zoom opportunities, email me and I will send you a link. Next, coming, next Sunday, this coming Sunday, something new at Peace. We're sharing communion virtually. Uh, that's online communion. You prepare the elements of bread and wine or grape juice in your home. It's the first Sunday of the month. We are adding this month, the opportunity, if you would like to come past the church, come to the church, and outside the church building, receive the elements of a wafer and grape juice. Uh, it is kind of an opportunity then in person from a communion minister, socially distanced, to share the Lord's Supper. If you would like to do that between noon and one next Sunday, so after the live stream time, you can kind of pull up to the to the door of the church here on the office side and um, go from there. God meets us and we are creative as we seek to share God's blessings in these days. And then the Sunday after that, Sunday, December 13th at 9.30 is our congregational meeting. That's the annual meeting. It's happening by Zoom. Please participate in that, especially if you are a voting member of the church. We need to have a, a quorum of members to vote on the budget, which is our ministry plan, um, and the new council for next year. If you would like to learn more about the budget, you can come and be part of a Zoom session this coming Sunday, uh, December 6th, and that's at 930. That's what's going to be happening during the adult class time. 
That's also by Zoom. Good news that we raised over $1,400 for our community resources ministry, matched with $500. That's almost $2,000 that we raised. Praise God for that. That's for the um, community uh, meal that we have on Fridays and resources that we share with the community. If you would like to help a family in need this season with a donation, you can make a monetary gift to the church and put holiday help on there. You could also bring a gift card to Fred Meyer or Walmart to the office, and we will get those to folks um, who could use them in this season. Our clothing ministry is in need of blankets. If you can donate a blanket or two, bring it back by the church office. We are also collecting hygiene supplies to give out on the Friday evenings during the meals. You're going to hear today um, in some few minutes from Sandra Puckett, who's going to read something that she has written as part of the writing group. The writing group is a wonderful group, and they're putting together a new peace devotional book. If you have any particular written pieces or artwork, uh, photos that you've taken that you would like to be part of this, you can get those to Sherry Shelton. The information about how to reach Sherry is in the constant contact email that we send out. I'm encouraging everybody to do Advent daily devotions at home. Uh, since we can't be together in person, how about making a, a, daily, uh, a daily opportunity for you to read God's word and share conversation with the people around you. We have special Advent devotional materials here for families with kids. Inside, you'll find a daily written piece. It's called the Jesse Tree. And there's a symbol that is on an ornament that you would color, a kid would color, and then either put it on a tree or on a piece of yarn or string. And you just add one every day from December 1st all the way up to Christmas Eve, December 24th. You read the scripture reading, you hear a little bit more about it, have a conversation about a question, and then share a prayer. If you would like to have this Advent devotional, uh, we will get that to you. You could either stop by the church or we will bring it to you. It also includes Advent candles for you to use at home. So, very special gift of uh, faith growth this season. There is also a wonderful Advent devotional daily uh, booklet that is available for adults and youth. It's called Living Well Through Advent, and we share the link to that on the church email that went out. We can't have a children's Christmas program this year, so we are creating a video of kids saying, speaking lines of the Christmas story from Luke's Gospel. If you would like to have your child, fourth grade or under, part of that, please let me know, and I'll tell you how to do it, okay? So that's a, gonna be a wonderful blessing. Wanting to make a big welcome back uh, to Brendan Nelson, our Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry, <laughs> who is on a, a vacation time, is now back, and he is our preacher today, bringing words of wisdom from time off. That is a good thing. Uh, thank you, Brendan. We send the, the worship bulletin, the announcements out every Friday and Sunday through email. If you are not receiving those, let me know. We'll get you on the list. And if you are new to worship today and would like me to reach to you, please share your contact information and I will connect. Uh, we are going to worship God now. Before we have music, we're going to share in an Advent litany. Uh, this is a way for us to enter into worship today in this season of hope and preparation for the coming of God in Jesus. Your line is, Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Come, Lord Jesus. Son of God, save us from the powers that hold us in bondage. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring hope where there is fear and despair. Come, Lord Jesus. Give your peace where there is trouble and violence. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring your justice where there is injustice and oppression. 
Come, Lord Jesus. Bring unity among your divided people. Come, Lord Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, show us your love and deepen our love. Come, Lord Jesus. Bless all your children on this earth. Bless us as we gather in your name. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, come and stay with us always. Come, Lord Jesus. May Jesus give us his peace and joy and help us share them with others. All peace and glory are his forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Thanks be to God for our musicians. So when your tests and trials 
Oh, they seem to get you down And all your friends and loved ones They're nowhere to be found Remember there's a friend named Jesus Who will wipe your tears away your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh I know that I can make it and I know that I can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands oh with Jesus I can take it Bye. 
Amen. In the adult class today, we talked about peace. Peace. What is the biblical meaning of peace? It's much, much more than the absence of violence. It's the presence of God restoring wholeness. Restoring wholeness. Do you need God to restore wholeness in your life? Certainly we need God's restoration of wholeness in our community and in our world. As we share God's peace this morning, please make that be your prayer for the person near you and wonder how you may be part of bringing peace with God's help. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share God's peace with anybody who happens to be around you. If you uh, are not connected to somebody in person, reach out with a text, a phone call. Share God's peace this week. God's peace. Good morning. God's peace to you all. If you'll join me in prayer this morning. Gracious God. Uh, thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us together to worship you. Um, despite the distance, we, we pray that your presence be here in the sanctuary and pray that your presence be upon everyone watching at home and upon those who are unable to be with us virtually at this time or in person at all. Uh, God, we just pray that as we uh, move forward this morning and worship that uh, your spirit um, inspire us, that uh, you open up our, eye, our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our, um, our whole selves to the message that we'll receive this morning and to the experience of, of worship and community today. Just pray that you be um, yeah, present with all those who, um, who need to come close to you this morning. Um, pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's reading from the Old Testament is Daniel 6, 6 through 27. So the presidents and satraps conspired and came to the king and said to him, O oh Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the, king, pre presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that whoever prays to anyone divine or human, for thirty days, except for you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and interdict. Although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had windows in its upper room towards Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to his God and praise him just as he had done previously. The conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. Then they approached the king concerning the interdict. O oh, oh king, did you not sign an interdict that anyone who prays to anyone, divine or human, within 30 days except you, O king, shall be thrown into the den of lions? The king answered, The thing stands fast according to the law of Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they responded to the king, Daniel, one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the interdict you have signed, but he is saying his prayers three times a day. When the king heard the charge, he was very much distressed. He was determined to save Daniel until the sun went down. He made every effort to rescue him. Then the conspirators came to the king and said to him, Know, O king, that it is law of the Medes and Persians that no interdict or ordinance that can establish the king or ordinance that the king establishes cannot be changed. Then the king gave the command, and Daniel was bought and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you faithfully serve, deliver you. A stone was brought, 
laid at the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring, the signet of the Lord's, so that nothing would change concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his place and spent the night fasting. No food was brought to him, and sleep fled him. Then at the break of day, the king got up and hurried to the den of lions. When he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you faithfully serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel then said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so they would not hurt me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king, I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no harm, no kind of harm was found on him because he trusted in his God. The king gave a command and those who had accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the den of lions, they, their children and their wives. Before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples and nations of every language throughout the world, may you have an abundant prosperity, make a decree that in all my royal dominion people should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God enduring forever. His kingdom shall be destroyed and his dominion has no end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, for he has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Here ends the Old Testament reading. Amen. Gospel from Luke 23, 1 through 5. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answers, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea and Galilee where he began even to this place. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Sandra Puckett. I'm a member of the Peace Writing Group, and we need you. We need your stories, your pictures, your your photographs. The last um, devotional that we made was so beautiful and enriched because you guys all helped. Um, this writing I'm going to read to you is called "What If." What if we weren't afraid to give each other hugs? even strangers. We were generous to the needy, generous to a fault to the needy. 
we didn't turn away from upsetting things? What if we learned to love even the unlovable unconditionally? The Democrats and Republicans actually worked together. Israel and Palestine shared the land. Extra food was given away instead of being thrown away. What if people actually said what they meant? Gentleness was abandoned in the land. Things and positions didn't mean more than people. In short, what if we could love like Jesus did? Would the world be different or would we be crucified too? We are all such lovely broken pots and the only way that we can communicate with each other is through words. Sometimes words aren't enough. It just doesn't seem possible to express emotions or dreams or fears. Sometimes the words don't come or the wrong word pops out of your mouth. I remember back when I was three telling my mom that I really wanted to be good, but I just couldn't. I long for a time and place of peace and contentment, loving and acceptance. My very soul cries out for Jesus. My mom used to tell me that God always says yes or no, but sometimes he said wait. Waiting is hard. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you to Peace Writing Group. They will be present, sharing some of their written pieces a couple times a month in worship and encouragement for you to share also. Uh, we're going to do a children's message. It is Advent. It is time to light some Advent candles. Let me talk to you about all of this. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping, as I said. So, Sandra, thank you for that message about, yes, it is hard to wait hard to wait. We're waiting and hoping for the celebration of Christmas, of Jesus coming to be with us as a little baby, God with us. And it's hard for us to wait, especially kids. Um, hey, adults too, right? And in the church, we have ways that help us wait. For example, sometimes people use Advent calendars. So I have this Advent calendar that I use in my office Kind of hard to have kids come by to put up a, a special piece each day. It's going to be different this year, but beginning with, with December 1st and going all the way up to December 25th, each day you put a new piece of the story of Jesus' birth up onto the picture, and soon all the pieces are there and we have reached Christmas. This is one way to wait, and you might have an Advent calendar that you can use at home. I've already talked about uh, the possibility of using a Jesse Tree daily devotional. If you did not get one of these and you are a family with kids, we will try to get you one. It is a special way every day to have something to read from the Bible, something to talk about. And as you do, you put a new ornament up, stepping your way to Christmas Eve. And there's a big way in the church that we wait for Christmas to come. I'm going to light a candle now on the Advent wreath. There are five candles here, four blue, one white in the middle. We light one blue candle this week in the first week of Advent. Next week we get to light two, the week after that three, then four. Then on Christmas Eve, we light the white candle in the middle helps us to count down. And each candle has a particular name. I'm going to light this first one, and I'll tell you about the name in a minute. So each candle has a name that helps us wait and hope for God to come among us in the Advent time. 
That candle is the candle of the prophets. Prophets were people who spoke God's word to God's people. They were people who were so close to God that when they spoke, they shared things that God wanted the people to hear. People who were hurting and sad got a word from God of hope and of comfort. People who were turning from God or doing things that God didn't like, they got a word from the prophet, shape up, change your ways, turn back to God. So prophets spoke these very important words. They also gave hints and clues that God was coming into the world in a new way. In the Old Testament, prophets spoke about a child being born. Isaiah says that a woman shall bear a child and his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. And Micah, a prophet, talks about it will be in Bethlehem where this child is born. These prophets were giving some hints and clues that Jesus was coming. Prophets like Isaiah, like Micah, like Jeremiah, are very important prophets in the Bible. And the prophets today help us know that God is with us when we're struggling and help us to get on track with God when we need to have that word of challenge. All right, so this is the candle of the prophets. It is the first week of Advent. We're going to light a second candle next week. You're going to have to come back and find out what that candle is all about. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas. God bless you. And now we welcome the message brought to us by Brendan. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be back with you all um, here at Peace. It feels like it's been forever, um, but it's always good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's always good to see um, smiling and friendly faces, even behind the masks. Um, it's good to be to be with you. Um, this message this morning. Um, is one of um, personal experience and one of which I hope will encourage uh, someone this morning. Do you all know I've been off for the last uh, four weeks or so? And through this time, um, God has really allowed me to learn more about myself um, and to really come come to grips with some things that I have been packing away. And it, it's so interesting. Um, I've in, intentionally um, not looked at like any emails and the bulletins that have, that have been coming out um, until last night when I was looking at the bulletin for this morning to kind of see what the flow was going to be. And it was so interesting that every song that Twyla singing today were the songs that have been on my heart as I've been preparing this message. I mean, every single one. <laughs> um, it's just amazing how God works. Prior to um, taking this time off, Pastor John and I met months before, and we had planned out to do a sermon on this day. Um, I just put it on my calendar that I was going to do the sermon. I hadn't looked at what the uh, topic or theme was going to be um, until I got ready to take the time off and to prepare. And as, I'm, as I was preparing and reading it, I just started to think about how God works, how God brings everything together. When, we, um, when I was given this date um, to share this message, I didn't know what was going to transpire uh, up until this point. So here we are today, the first Sunday of, of Advent, and we know that it's, it's all about waiting, right? And if you're anything like me, sometimes it's hard to wait. And Sandra said this just a little bit ago. A lot of us hate to wait. Now, when we think about waiting, even if we're at a stoplight and that light turns green and that person in front of us doesn't move fast enough, what do you do? You hit that horn, 
right? So you're anticipating to go. We have a very hard time waiting, even so much so if you are a Black Friday shopper, you started shopping on Thursday. Yeah. This year, with anticipation, they even started Black Friday shopping a week before Thanksgiving. We can't wait, right? So when we look at the text today and, and look at Daniel's story, he shares some really important elements about what it means to wait. Daniel knew all too well what it was like to wait on God. He was waiting on God in what I call the messy middle. An uncertain time, and he was unsure about how things would turn out. Here he is. He had excelled in um, King Darius's court, and he had distinguished himself above all others. Now, he was the victim of jealousy and, and conspiracy, but yet he stayed faithful to God through this time, even when it was hard. Yeah. Daniel continued to pray. And sometimes for us, it is hard to pray when things are challenging. Daniel's thrown into this lion's den, and he has to wait to see if God is going to show up. Is he going to come or not? So for me, this key question in the story is, is, is Daniel's God really alive? Is he really powerful? Can he save Daniel from the lion's den? Maybe you find yourself wondering the same thing today. You're in a lion's den, so to speak. When I say the lion's den, I think it, it, it represents for me a place of trial, a place of pain, uh, opposition, attack. And maybe we have a den experience because of circumstances that have been out of your control. An illness, a loss of life, any tough situation. Maybe your den experience is because of your own decisions. Like the king in this story, we may have gotten ourselves in, into a bind at some point because of the choices we've made. And we find ourselves to be powerless and feeling alone. And the possibility for change and for rescue could be different and hard. But God will show up and God will do something about it. So waiting is very hard. But Daniel was a, is a great example of how you kind of master this waiting game. In his time of waiting, what did he do? He prayed. Sometimes it's hard to pray when you're waiting. Sometimes it's hard to, to pray when you're anticipating something. But prayer is the way we learn to trust God, to rely on him and to surrender to his will. Prayer is our yes to God's kingdom, even when we are anxious and afraid. You know, during my, my time away, I've had the opportunity to read some books that I have been kind of putting on, on the shelf and say, I'm, I'm going to get to it one day, or I'll, I'll start to read it a little bit and then not be able to, to finish it. And when you're away for four weeks, you have lots of time to do things. But one of those books that I um, have been wanting to read was a book by um, Dr. Martin Luther King called Strides Towards Freedom. And in this book, there's an incident that he describes, um, an experience that he describes of receiving a death threat via a phone call. He, he comes home after a grueling session with other civil rights leaders. His phone rings, and he hears a sneering voice on the phone that says, leave Montgomery immediately if you, if you um, have no wish to die. In this book, he says he hangs up the phone, and with trembling hands, he goes to the kitchen while his wife and kids are sleeping, 
to put on a pot of coffee. Then he sank, uh, he sank into the kitchen table, worried. He's quoted as saying, I was ready to give up. With my coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. In the state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problems from God to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. Some years later, he spoke to an audience about that prayer. And he said it was in the darkest hour, it was the darkest hour of his life. His moment in the lion's den, you could say of such. But it also became the most transformative moment where he heard the voice of Jesus saying to him, fight on. I promise I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you alone. This passage in, in, in this book really struck me. Thinking about being at a point of exhaustion, being in the lion's den, but hearing God say, fight on. Fight on. I will promise you I will never leave you. During this time, some of you may have been wondering and questioning where is Brendan? Why is he gone for so long? And I tell you, I had a den experience. I found myself in the lion's den. I'm going to rewind back to February 2020. I was actually a little further uh, than that, December, uh, uh, January. I found myself nowhere to, to, to live. I was in the middle of trying to find what, what my home, where my home was going to be. And for a month, I was sleeping on a recliner at my parents' house, trying to figure out what my next step was going to be. Frustrated with closed door after closed door of this place could work, this place could work. And I began to, to just get frustrated with myself, with life and things that were going on. But much like many of you, sometimes things get hard and we just kind of push through and we, and we just suppress. So in that, I just kind of journeyed through. Come February, I find a place and I'm moving in and all seems well. And then, mid-February, we started hearing rumblings of coronavirus. And as we move forward in the, in the next weeks, we hear about a shutdown. So here we are in a pandemic. I'm alone, cannot connect with my family. Again, I continue to move and to suppress. Months go by and we continue to journey as a church and we find new ways to do worship. and We find new ways to connect with people and we're going. Meanwhile, I'm still suppressing. We hit May and my cousin dies from a long battle of cancer. I grieve in the moment, and I move on. I suppress. Weeks later, we see and hear black men and black women being killed right in front of us on the TV screen. The injustice that we see every day. It seemed like it was a never-ending story. Every week, there was something else. I cried, I yelled, I screamed, I suppressed, and continued to move on. 
June 8th, I wake up to a s missed phone calls from my sister. And I, f I get the chance to call her back, and she tells me that my nephew has been killed. I scream, I yell, I go on a panic, and she says, what can you do? Can you find your contacts to help us figure out what happened? I called Pastor John, I cried, but again, I suppressed and went into support my family mode, support my brother. And for months, this is what I did. And I found myself in a den. I found myself anxious. I found myself fearful. I found myself overwhelmed with everything. I've taken it all in, and I suppressed it and pushed it down. And then I hit a day to where I broke. And this was a time to where I felt it and I knew I had to respond. And so during this time of being away, I have been in a lion's den, dealing with all of these issues that have come my way. Tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. But patiently waiting on God to heal. Knowing that he is with me, but allowing myself to be in a place to where I can hear. The more I showed up for work, I couldn't hear. The more I tried to just push through, I couldn't hear. God had to put me in a place to where I could listen. God put Daniel in this place so he can hear, but to also show his power. There are many things I could have done. I could have taken my own life. I could have lashed out in anger to others. But when I heard God say, step back, I had to. And if you know me, I show up. I love my job. I love supporting and I love people. And I will go and go until I can't anymore. But that wasn't doing anyone any service. So today, you may find yourself in the lion's den. You may be experiencing some sort of pain, some sort of hurt, anxiety through all the things that we have experienced. But I encourage you to listen to yourself, listen to the spirit, listen to your body. So often as black men, we don't want to share our emotional experiences. I said to Pastor John in a conversation prior to taking off, I'm exhausted. I find myself being anxious every single day. And I needed to deal with that. I needed to deal with that in a, in a way and in a place to where I wasn't responsible for anything else but my own mental health. So whatever your lion's den may be, I encourage you to actively pray kneel down and listen to the voices of the faithful ones who have come before us. We will all have challenging experiences. We need to wait on God to bring us through those experiences. Yes. Waiting is hard, but the outcome is great. Through my experience, I've been able to talk to other men about mental health, 
men who have checked in with me, I've been able to connect with my dad in a much deeper way. So taking that den experience, it was something that I knew I needed to go through and I did not. When Pastor John said, you should take some, ex- some extended time away, I was like, ah, oh, but, ah, uh, but. But where would I be now had I not listened? Whatever your den is today, allow God to, to work through you, to work with you. I pray that as we move forward during this pandemic and all the things that are uncertain, that we continue to love one another, to to encourage one another, to lift each other up. We need one another during this time. I don't mind waiting. Now, this four weeks didn't solve everything, but it gave the opportunity to open up my heart, And it gave me a chance to dig a little deeper into where I am and where I want to be. So I pray for you and I ask that you pray for me. I love you, peace. Thank you, everyone, for your words of encouragement um, during this time um, and prior to uh, me, me stepping away. I will lift you up and ask that you lift me up as well. And I pray that we fight on. We fight on and know that God would never leave us alone. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
we're standing here only because you made a way. We'll now collect uh, your prayers of thanksgiving and also those uh, concerns and petitions that you want to lift up before the community and before God this morning. Uh, we'll have Pastor John begin with prayers that he's collected. Uh, please comment your prayers in the comments as we do each week so that they can be read aloud. On this Thanksgiving weekend, uh, thanksgiving to God for all God's good gifts. If you'd like to share some of those good gifts in words of thanksgiving, if you are online right now, uh, live stream, go ahead and put that in the comments section. I'm going to read a prayer from our larger synod, uh, Southwestern Washington Synod, a thanksgiving prayer. It helps us to, to ponder more deeply. Almighty God, when we don't have food at our table or there are empty seats next to us, we ask for your healing of this pandemic and hearts of gratitude for farmers and feeding heroes who feed us and our world. When we see the internet daily, sometimes all day, to learn, meet, educate, and plan, we ask for eyes of gratitude for ever-expanding technology that allows us to be with others. When we and our neighbors are ill or dying, we ask for hearts of thanksgiving for life and for our medical professionals. When we see people hated for the way they look and the color of their skin, we beg for both forgiveness and conversion as we open our hearts and minds in communal prayer and needed action. Guide us through the love you revealed to establish the justice you proclaimed, that all peoples might dwell in harmony and peace, united by that one love that binds us to each other and to you. Amen. Lifting up some more prayers of gratitude to Brendan for the message today, for his ministry among us, continued prayers as he's asked us to pray for him, uh, for continued renewal and a deep sense of God's grounding presence. And we pray for all who feel as if they are in the lion's den, experience life now as a lion's den waiting on God. I want to lift up um, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones today with special prayer for Becky Lee at the death of her father, Ziada Gillis at the death of her sister, uh, and all those others for whom holidays are difficult times as we remember loved ones who have, been, who have gone before us and are no longer present walking this earth with us. I want to lift up Diane Stair as she continues um, her journey with, with cancer now um, soon into a time of surgery and treatment. And I want to lift up all others who are in need of God's healing power. Uh, Pastor Jay. Melody Duke says a uh, prayer for those with uh, mental health um, concerns during these times. Paul says prayers for the Finch family at the loss of Walt. Dean has prayers for uh, his cousin, Scott, who passed away suddenly yesterday. Prayers of concern for Annie Burris and her family at the death of her niece um, in Oklahoma and prayers for her niece, Mary Ann, who was just diagnosed with Parkinson's. Peter asks for prayer for healing for his friend Robert. Um, Malcolm says the hope of the new church here, trusting in God to deliver us from, from the lion den. Uh, prayers for his friend Sebastian, who's been dealing with uh, some mental health challenges as he 
uh, in grief of his mother's um, coming death. Please continue to lift up prayers of either thanksgiving or concern that you have this morning in the comments, and we encourage everyone who's watching online who can see those comments to please pray for those things um, in your, your own prayer uh, at home throughout the week. And you may continue to add prayers to the comments if you'd like as people continue to view worship this morning and they can lift those things up in prayer as well. Does anyone else here have any prayers that they'd like to lift up? Okay, a roommate explicit. Okay. Okay, so Sandra's lifting up prayer for protection over Bruce and um, because of an exposure to COVID secondhand. So prayers for Bruce and any any of those who continue to be exposed to this virus. All right, please join me in prayer this morning. Living God, we come before you this morning um, to lift up the thanksgivings, the gratitudes, and the concerns of our community. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives and for your comfort in these challenging times. God, we thank you for Brendan's message, especially this morning, a message of reminding us the ways that your um, comfort and presence and um, the way that you're working in uh, our moments of being in the lion den. We thank you for that message and the hope and encouragement that it brings to those who find themselves in the lion's den. And God, we pray for those um, this morning who may be in the lion's den. God, we pray that they not forget your um, presence and your work in their life. God, we pray that they feel and experience a strong sense of that um, while they navigate that den experience. God, we pray for each person who's expressed the great feeling of grief that they're experiencing or the loved ones around them are experiencing. We pray for comfort for those who are grieving. We pray um, for protection and for strength for those who are battling uh, COVID or those who are fearing a possible exposure or those who face exposure every day due to the profession or caretaking or um, the environment that they're living in. So God, we pray that protection and that strength. We pray for those who are experiencing great challenges uh, with mental health and emotional wellness during uh, the pandemic, but also always, God, we know um, that this is not just unique to the time of COVID. So we pray uh, your strength, your healing, uh, your presence, your comfort, your guidance for those who continue to navigate their mental and emotional health, well-being um, during this time. For each person who lifted up a petition, we pray uh, that you hear and be present and come close to those people in that, in that particular moment, in that particular um, grief or challenge or um, experience of um, that emotion for them. We just pray that you be there. For all of these things, for all the things that were lifted up, sorry, for all the things that were lifted up, for all the things that uh, may lay on our hearts that were not expressed, we just pray uh, your presence in those things. In your name we pray, amen. Amen.
May God walk with you and bless you now and always. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. with hope. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.